Um, this is the NESIS EOI principal and assistant principals evaluation process. We already introduced ourselves. So our agenda today, we are going to be um, learning how to access the system. We are going to make sure that you know how to um, check plan access right. We're going to be able to look at the principal evaluation process, about data collection, about the principal summary evaluation, and then we're going to touch on the um, teacher and support staff evaluation process, the teacher and support staff evaluation summary, PDPs and resources. Immediately following this presentation, we do have um, another presentation geared directly towards teachers. So if you want to join that, we do have a link at the end that you can click to join that. Um, so we will touch on it briefly here, but um, we will go in that in more details after this presentation. So how do you access NESIS? So when you access, access NESIS, you automatically go to the principal landing page. Um, so you're going to see this on the home screen. Um, you'll see now um, today I do have these two webinars, but after today I'll remove those. You'll have access to all the webinars we've done all year. Um, mainly probably where you spend most of your time is on the staff evaluations page um, where you're doing your observations. You may spend time in my staff where you're assigning plan types. Um, and then also some things you may not have noticed on the landing page is um, up here at the top there is an envelope. So if you ever um, get an email from NISIS, and sometimes emails are not correct in NISIS, so you may get a targeted announcement. So if you ever see an envelope with a number, check on that because that is a message that was delivered delivered um, to you. You can also see up here you'll have your calendar. So sometimes if you sign up for NISIS PD and it has certain dates, you'll see the calendar up here. And then you'll also see vendor help guides in the question marks. Um, you can also click on your initials and there's some information you can find when you click on your initials in the upper right hand corner. So if you've never clicked on your initials, click up there so you can um, look at what's found up there and we'll demonstrate that when we're in the live site in just a second. In addition to the um, home page, a page you might spend a lot of your time is on the help guides page. If you have never looked at the help guides page, you will notice that there are um, view and do steps for every single plan type. You'll notice that the principal um, AP plan is down here. Your evaluator has a guide that they can look at. You have a guide for yourself. And for some reason, it did not let me. Thank you, um, Jennifer, for letting them in. And um, you'll see that there's also a graphic to kind of show you that process. Um, depending on your rights and NISIS does depend on what rights you will see on the help guides. So you may see some additional like district administrator rights on the side if you have access to that. But just depending on your rights depends on what you do see when you are in NISIS. So as you are assigning um, access rights to teacher um, and staff plans, that is done on the My Staff page. These are the different rights that you can give. You can give evaluator rights. Um, the lead principal of the school, you automatically come in with those evaluator rights. Everybody who has your school as their primary location, you are their evaluator if you come in with a 114. Um, if you are an assistant principal, you can be assigned as an evaluator or you can even be assigned as an observer. I did color code these because people get confused with observer and peer observer. An observer has roles very similar to the evaluator. The only thing they can't do is they can't sign off on the summary at the end and they can't be a peer observer. So um, observer, they can do the observations, they can go in, they can make comments, they can add notes, they can't do the summary evaluation at the end and they can't do a peer observation. Peer observers, this is um, a lot of times used to meet those beginning teacher requirements on those comprehensive plans. So a peer observer, they can come in, they are going to um, do those peer observers for any kind of plan type, but it is required for those beginning teachers on that comprehensive plan. Um, but a peer observer can be used at any level. Um, we also have mentors. Um, you have peer observers for the like the um, observations. You have mentors for PDPs. You don't have them for both. Um, so if you have a mentor, you will sit, assign that to your PDP plan. Then you have people who have view only rights. They just need to be able to see, but they can't edit. And then usually you have someone at the district level who has district administrator rights who has reopen rights. So they can reopen those plans. Um, I was going to say, Jennifer, we have any questions so far in the chat about any of those? I see any. Okay. No, just making sure. not right just now. Making, okay, just mm -hmm. making sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So where you do assign those is that is assigned on the My Staff page, and it's under Administration Staff Management. 
I did link some more information down here about beginning teacher support because you may need the, you know, for your peer and mentor um, plant or those who are going to be your peer observers and your mentors. And then this is also a help guide. It's also found on the help guides page, but we did link this in here. Um, person B. I hope things I'm the principal of a charter school. Um, if you're a principal of a charter school, I just saw your comment come in. As an evaluator, um, you, you know, you're going to be able to evaluate all of these people. You wouldn't want to be the peer observer. Jennifer, can you give more details like a peer observer? What are roles for the peer observer? The peer observer should be another teacher in your school, hopefully on the same grade level or teaching the same subject, but you should not be the peer observer and the observer. I was gonna say, I thought it needed to be a different person. It is, is that the same for mentors as well, Jennifer? Yes. Okay. So it you should, would want hopefully, to... I mean, it, some of the, sometimes the charters are a little different, but you should have another teacher assigned as a mentor and another teacher assigned as the peer observer. Not I hope that answers your question. Now, assigning rights to principal plans is found in a different spot. That is actually found on the staff evaluations page. And rights that are given to principal plans are you have the evaluator. Um, the principal plan is the one plan that already comes in as started, and it is already started, so your district administrator can go ahead and assign an evaluator to your plan. Um, you know, sometimes it's superintendent, sometimes it's a director um, of certain places, but they can assign that. You can also have a contributor. This person can access the edit notes and the artifacts, um, but everything else is view only. And then you have people who can just view, and then they're usually, like I said, is someone in your district, you know, district administrator who can reopen those plans as needed. So I just want to show you the differences and how they look. Excuse me. So when you are in the live site and you are going to like the staff evaluations page, let's see if I have anybody here. Oh, sorry, let me stop impersonating. So when you are trying to go to the um, assign a principal, um, an evaluator or contributor, or this is how this gets assigned to you from the staff evaluations page, you find someone who is on the principal plan. So I'm gonna find one of my sample people here. So when I click on this person, you click access rights, and this is where you would, you're gonna find a new user. Remember you have your contributor, remember they can um, add edit notes and artifacts, but everything else is view only. You have your evaluator, who is the one who actually goes in and completes the summary evaluation and those observations. If someone needs reopen rights or someone just needs view only, you would just click new user, you would type in their first and last name, a list will pop up and you would click add and done. So that is how you add um, or access rights to a principal plan. To add access rights to um, someone else's plan, you go to my staff and then for my staff, you're going to see here that you have administration staff management. And then um, if there's a person's name here that you don't have and you need to add, then you can click add administrators, but then you just click on this drop down. You'll go to admin rights and you can add those plans. And I do have those guides in there, but that is how you assign rights to different plans. Remember, principles is done on the staff evaluations page and for all of your other staff that is done on the my staff page. Back. So if you want to see who has access to these, you can go to the reporting tab um, and go to quick reports. And from quick reports, you can do like a mentor relationship um, year and you can see who the mentors are in your school. You can also do a peer observer um, report to see who your peer observers are and district administrators inside administrators can run these. Um, depending on your role, you might not see a reporting tab, but if you have the reporting tab, that is found right here. If you um, have an, a very long list it, or if you're zoomed in, it could be on a drop down list. Not everybody has a reporting tab. It does depend on your rights and thesis at site and district administrators. But if you go to reporting and then you click quick reports, then you can see down here you have um, peer observer and then you'll see that you also have mentor relationship. So you do have those so you can run a report to see who was assigned. So you can verify that people who need those roles have those assigned to them. Um, also, if you have district administrators, they can run additional ad hoc reporting to pull those reports as well. Um, 
but not everybody has access to those ad hoc reports. So um, I'm going to change, turn this over to Jennifer and let her talk about the principal evaluation process. Yes, we're going to talk a little bit about where you should be here at the end of the year as a principal in your own evaluation process. Um, I have on here linked some um, guides for you. There's an infographic that we're going to look at on the next slide. And then there are just guides for the evaluator of principals and then what you should expect as the um, principal being evaluated. So those are just links for you. You can take a look at those later. And this is the infographic that I was just referring to. At this point, you this is the whole one page outline of the process for the year, and it was designed for your convenience so that you can see all seven steps and the processes and see all the optional forms and the required documentation that you must have. This document is located on the principles page of our NISIS resource site also. So today we're just going to focus on step six and seven of the evaluation cycle itself. Now, in step six, which is preparing a consolidated performance assessment, would, this would happen at the end of the school year. The principal or assistant principal is going to synthesize all the information that they obtain under step four and five earlier in the year, and then prepare a consolidated assessment or a comprehensive view of their performance of goals throughout the year. This brief summary of all the data and artifacts is used to judge the performance and should be provided to the superintendent well in advance of the performance discussion where the final performance levels will then be discussed. So we'll look at and then that's step six and at the end of the year the summary evaluation conference will happen and that's between the assistant principal and principal and their evaluator and they're going to meet to discuss the progress in completing their evaluation process and then begin to form the following year's goals. I'll turn sorry, it back. sorry, it went it went too many. Sorry about okay. that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the principal data collection. And so when you are in your plan, you have a chance to um, add artifacts and add notes, and you have a chance to um, add that information here. And so it is in the data collection section. Um, from your view, you're just going to see artifacts, notes, and rubrics, but your evaluator will have an additional section for evaluator notes. Um, sometimes when they go in and do observations, they take additional notes, but you don't have access to see those. But you, they can see your artifacts and notes, and they can see your rubric. So if you would like to add something and you want to add your artifacts, you know, as you're coming in, especially um, towards the end of the year or maybe throughout the year, you want to continue to add artifacts, you can do that. So all you would do is you would click the artifact and notes section of the container. And then after you click um, new note, you will have the option to make an attachment. So you will actually have to click new note. You're going to describe it, tell what it is. You can tag it to a standard if you would like. And then after that, you have the option to attach. So after you click new note, describe it, and then you can attach it here. So anytime you want to add artifacts, you know, your documentation, things you've done throughout the year, um, maybe to go ahead and have it there. So when it is time at the end of the year to do that summative evaluation, you have that information. Um, also, when you are in the end of the year container, you're going to see, you know, you'll see end of year, it's going to say three activities. Anything that's required does come in and it does have an asterisk. Um, you're going to see you have the consolidated performance assessment, you have the end of the year um, evaluator signature, end of the year principal AP signature. So that consolidated summary assessment is a comprehensive review of all your performances throughout the year. Um, your evaluator will have to um, edit the status of goal progressing they're going to have to add some information there and then you're going to have to sign off um, and and that's the next step there so when you are in that consolidated performance assessment um, you're going to come in here you can click um, additional artifacts if there's anything else you would like to add at this point you can also do this um, remember you can add artifacts that you think would help towards those conversations things maybe that weren't seen as you're um, observed but you can attach those as well so those additional artifacts can go in that um, place as well okay. also when you oh sorry I'm gonna turn this back over for <laughs> sorry <Thanks. laughs> 
Thank you. Um, we're just going to focus just for a second on step seven, which is your summary evaluation conference. This is the final step in your um, principal evaluation process for the school year. That conference should take place at your school site, and it should include discussion of your self-assessment, the consolidated performance assessment, and your summary evaluation form, which is your rubric. And you should be prepared in advance for the meeting. Um, at this meeting, you would meet with your evaluator to discuss next year's performance goals. Um, we often get questions about what is required, and as you can see, the required documents are in red within step seven. Um, what you see in red are required, the black words are required processes. So for step seven, all three items identified are required, but the state only requires a, requires a self-assessment and the summary evaluation form to be completed within NESIS itself, and it is located within NESIS. So I'm going to turn it back over to Donna so we can look at the process a little bit further. Okay, um, so once you are in that summary evaluation container, you're going to see the container, you're going to check on it, um, then you're going to see that summary evaluation. So um, first thing is your evaluator is going to actually start that first. So your um, evaluator is going to click edit there, um, and you can see that right now we don't have anything set. So we can see that now this has to be done because it's not set. These are required elements. So your evaluator is going to click this first. And then after your evaluator is going to click this, it's going to open that rubric and then they're going to click start new. And this is where they're going to look at what you have done all year. They're going to decide um, if you um, what needs to be clicked here in this um, summary evaluation rubric. So at each part, should it be developing, proficient, accomplished, distinguished or not demonstrated? They have a chance to add comments here. You know, if there's any actions that need to be added. So this is what your evaluator is going to start. So after that, you, um, the evaluator is going to review this with you and then you would have a chance to sign off. Um, so your evaluator is going to review you. Um, evaluator would sign off and then you as the principal would sign off here. And then the next step here is that you have a chance to add some information about next year's goals. Now these goals will not carry over into um, the program for next year or the um, the product next year, but you can go back and review your your um, goals that you set and you can add those on next year's plan. So it is like a holding spot because you can go back and look at your um, archived evaluations. Um, so if you want to go ahead and set goals up as you're having these meetings at the end of the year, if you're having those discussions, you can just click next year's goals and then you can click edit. Remember that at any time, if you would like to add a written response, you can add a written response at any point um, in the evaluation or in the observations throughout the year. When you um, are adding these written responses, you do have a chance to add a written response multiple times. You would just click new. It's going to ask you what this response is um, regarding. So you could have done one of it beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year, summary evaluation. So if you would like to, you know, add notes after each section, add a document, you can do that. This is not the spot to add artifacts. Remember, artifacts are uploaded in different places, but you can come in here and add a written response each time. So if you would like to add one at the end of each time, you can do that. After you have submitted a written response, um, your evaluator is going to acknowledge that. And so your evaluator will just see the your written response, they click open it, and then they, they check the box that say that they have received that. Um, so Jennifer, I'll let you start. Okay, now we're gonna switch gears from your evaluation as a principal to your role at, in evaluation process of the teachers and staff that you are over. Um, so Donna, if you go to the next one, there you go. On the screen, you see the teacher evaluation process one pager that you can find on page 21 of the teacher evaluation manual. And you can also find this document on our NISA's resource site and they are, this document is linked. Our focus for today is mostly gonna be on step four, which is the summary evaluation and goal setting. But we wanna take just a second to make sure that we have completed all of step three as we're beginning to wrap up our observation cycles for our teachers and staff at the end of the year. So looking at step three, which is the observation cycle, it includes component five and six, the observations and the post-observation conferences. At this time of the year, you should be in your final rounds of all your observations so that you will have enough time to complete that coaching cycle to help your teachers with their growth and improvement of their own of their practices. 
So as a reminder, if you have teachers with less than three years of employment, they are on that comprehensive evaluation cycle, which means the three formal observations by the principal and one formal by a peer. And remember, all formal observations must last 45 minutes or the entire class period. That's very important for our BTs. Um, teachers with more than three years of employment are on a standard or an abbreviated cycle. <clears throat> And for a standard cycle, the principal will do three observations, and one of those must be formal. And those are, are for our folks who have taught more than three years or are in their renewal year. So our teachers who have taught more than three years are not BTs, are not new to us, can be placed on the abbreviated cycle. And that will include two observations that are only going to focus on standard one and four. Um, and those abbreviated observations can be formal or informal, meaning they can last 20 minutes or 45 minutes. So we get a lot of questions about that. So looking at component six, that post observation conference, this is very important. These conferences should take place within 10 school days after the formal observation took place. If you are unable to have that post conference, post observation conference within 10 days, we strongly recommend that you just start over and do another observation because any feedback that you give after 10 days becomes irrelevant and it just messes up your whole process and makes that feedback less meaningful and less effective for your teachers. So post observations are not required for any informal observations, but we do recommend that you offer those um, as an opportunity to begin to discuss best practices and growth for your teachers. So they're not required, but we do suggest that you offer those. Um, Jennifer, a question yes. came in on the chat. Um, uh -huh. If I'm new, but they are not, do they count as standard or abbreviated? If you are new, but it they says, are not. Yes, I assume the principal's new, but the, the staff is not. Okay, you would focus everything on the staff, not the newness of the um, principal. But a principal can choose to put all of their, they can choose not to do the abbreviated, but it's going to be a lot more observations and you probably might get a little pushback from teachers if you were to do that. But I would base it pretty much on where the teacher standing were within my school. If you have any more questions, you can um, contact me and we can talk about it. OK. OK. All right, this is just a really helpful chart that explains the requirements of the evaluation process and the three types. Um, that are available. So this could be used as a cheat sheet, help with your teacher so that they understand which cycle they're on and what the expectations are going to be throughout the year. This is also on our resource site for you. So as a brief overview, we want everybody to understand that the whole observation cycle is it's a year long process and observations are a series of formative assessments. You are collecting data on each of the observation rubrics as you go in and do those observations in the classrooms. At the end of the year, you're going to take all of the data that you've collected and you consider everything, including how many times throughout the year that you have noted an item on the rubric as you've been in doing the observations itself. All of this information at the end of the year will funnel into the summative evaluation ratings themselves. So we tell teachers you're observed during the year, you're only evaluated at the end, but you're going to take all of that formative information to evaluate them at the very end and give those ratings. So our main focus for today is related to step four in our process. Um, we're going to look at component seven, which is the summary evaluation conference and the scoring of the summary rating form itself. Prior to the end of our school year and accordance with your LEA timelines, the principal will conduct a summary evaluation conference with each teacher to discuss the components of their evaluation cycle type which is used. That could be the comprehensive, the standard, or the abbreviated. After those conversations have been had, the principal will give a rating for each element in a rubric for evaluating their teachers. They will comment on any, any element that is, um, or standard with that is marked not demonstrated. They will give an overall rating for each standard in the rubric. And they will provide teachers with opportunities to add comments to their teacher summary and end of year rating form. We, 
principals also will review the completed teacher summary end of year rating form with the teacher. And then they will secure the teacher's signature on the record of teacher evaluation activities and the teacher summary end of year rating form. Um, I did want to add something here, uh -huh. Jennifer. Sorry. Um, okay. When you say if they have to add a comment for not demonstrated, we are aware and we've reported to PowerSchool there's not always a comment box when you choose not demonstrated. So okay. if there is an element not demonstrated, you can go to the comment section at the end of that standard and um, say, state which element was not demonstrated and add your comment there. So we have reported that to PowerSchool, but that will be a fix not next year, not this year. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Right. No, thank you for adding that. I'd forgotten that we had been discussing that. So also make sure that if a teacher, the teacher signature is just saying that the, the process has been followed and this conference has been has taken place. It does not mean that they agree. So please explain that to teachers. If they don't agree, they can submit comments, but signing it just means that it happened. So as we're determining the rating for each element, the principal is going to identify the first descriptor that has not been marked throughout the year. So if, as you're looking at this at the end of the year, anything in orange is going to show where you have at some point marked that box on the rubric. So you can see the first one are developing four times the first element has been checked. So what you're going to do is look and see where the last, everything is filled in, which column everything is filled in. And as you can see in red over on the last, the next to the last column under accomplished and interaction, we have one element that has been checked, but there is nothing in the red boxes here. So that means, put one more time, Donna. This element would be scored as proficient because all of the indicators have, have been checked at least once throughout the year, all that compilation of data as you've been observing teachers. Even though they have one thing marked and accomplished, you will have some teachers who will question that. You have to have everything under accomplished with some mark in it throughout the year to be able to score them there. So this one would be proficient. Okay, the bottom, okay, go back one more. There you go. There you go. Now, on the bottom of the screen, you will see standard one of the summary rating sheet for teachers. You're going to take the information that you gathered at the, from the top and you would mark proficient for 1A leads in the classroom because that's where we decided at the top where they would fall and what rating they would earn. This same process is applied for each element as you go through and you would mark where that teacher fell on each of the elements. Now on this after on this one, you have the summary rating sheet at the top. Um, after a rating, each element has been established. An overall rating for the standard can be then determined. When you're determining the summary evaluation, teachers can attach comments and artifacts that can be considered by the evaluator before they make their final standard ratings. For each standard one through four, the evaluator makes a reasonable assessment based upon all evidences considering the elemental ratings derived from observations and any other information or artifacts that were shared to inform that overall standard rating. Comments should be written in all sections to support and reflect that rating. Teacher signatures indicate that the observation was re reviewed with them and the evaluator signature indicates that the observation was reviewed and they followed all processes. So as you can see here, there's one developing and all these others are proficient. So the final score for this one was proficient. Sorry. Oh, you're good. Okay, now let's look at standard, the standard four in front of you. You are rating a teacher based on where they are consistently performing at the time of the summative evaluation. You do not average the number of checks but you use your professional judgment of that teacher performance and overall within a standard. And this is where your meaningful coaching conversations for growth will be based. 
and your growth goals for the following year will be developed to help the teacher with strategies and resources that will enable them to move along on the growth continuum of the rubric. Because as you can see here, if we average, this person would be scored as proficient, but the principal used all data that they had, although they were scored some of the elements um, as proficient, they t felt that the teacher was actually performing consistently at a developing level. So this is where your coaching conversations would come in and you would help that teacher with resources to help them to grow on the continuum of the rubric for next year. On this page, um, directions for completing that end of year final summary evaluation can be found on page 36 of the teacher evaluation manual if you want a little more detailed information. If you do come across any questions as you're completing summatives, please feel free to call me and we can talk through. Okay, we're going to talk now about the teacher and support staff summary evaluations. So in order to um, make sure that you can lock these activities at the end of the year, because, you know, we're always looking for those check marks and those locks to be locked. Um, that remember that comprehensive plan does have three um, observations plus that peer standard has at least three observation abbreviated has two and the late higher has one these observation containers must be locked in order to open that summative channel so just as a reminder all of these things do have asterisks and they do have to be completed prior to opening that summative channel so in order to get to your summary evaluation or help your teachers get there, you are, they are going to navigate to staff evaluations. Um, you would search for their name and then you would click um, on their name and to open their plan type. And then you would be allowed to go down to the bottom and open that summary evaluation channel. Um, you will see that that does have seven activities. And so once you open that, you're going to see that you have the summary evaluation form. You're going to have conference, teacher acknowledgement, um, document summary override. Now, this is new this year. This is the first time this has been here. So if for some reason um, you've always been able to um, override if they want an agree, if the teacher wouldn't sign off on the observation. This year, if a teacher refused to sign off on the summary, your district administrator can do that for you. You don't have access, but your district administrator does. So that is a way, you know, we always say, as Jennifer said, signing does not mean you agree. It just means the information was shared with you. But if for some reason a teacher does refuse to sign, then um, your district administrator can override that for you. So that is new this year as you're getting into these plans. Um, remember, at any time you can do a written response. Um, or your, per, your teacher or staff member can do a written response. You would acknowledge that and then you want to lock those activities. If you do this document summary overnight override, that does take an overnight process. So you would have to wait and then the next day um, continue with that. Um, just as a reminder, when you're in that summary evaluation, um, the first step is the principal is going to complete that summary evaluation form and they're going to start that summary evaluation conference. Um, the teacher is going to acknowledge that or once again, your niece's district administrator can override that if need be. Um, any written responses can be completed at any time. They don't have to wait for certain spots and then the um, principal would acknowledge and then lock the container. So in order to help get to that and what do you need to put in that, you are going to want to look at the record of the teacher evaluation activities. I know that this is something that Jennifer just showed you. So you're going to from the summary evaluation, you would click record of teacher activity and the observation scoring summary is where she got that chart that showed how many times each of these had been rated during each, um, overall for the year. Anytime a person was observed, you can click the drop down arrow and see the specific observations here, but it's going to um, default to all. And once again, as Jennifer told you, you look at where, you know, those numbers do fall. So that would be once again in the summary evaluation in the observation scoring summary. Um, and then if you want to print that, you can. Um, in addition, you do have um, in that same container, you do have the record of evaluation activities. So if you click on the record of evaluation activities, it's gonna, you will see that you can edit. There is a teacher background section. Um, most of the time, people don't really enter teacher's background, but if there's any um, situation that may have affected um, the teacher's performance that year, maybe they went out and leave, maybe some, you know, something happened, um, you can enter that information there. A lot of times um, in this section, if for some reason they may have changed PDP types, that can be 
enter here as well. You know, you can enter information there, but that is in the record of teacher activity. Um, when you click here, there's only one drop down and that is just going to allow you to print that plan. It's not like um, in the PDP, we can see multiple things when we drop down, but here you can click. And when you click on this, it's going to show you everything that happened, the record of activity. Um, you'll see the dates that the event um, was completed. You'll see the signatures and when they were done. You will actually see all the start and end times for all of the observations. So every it's just a quick snapshot of everything that's been done throughout the year. Um, Jennifer, um, isn't this a report that a lot of people run for those B BTs at the end of the year? Yes, it can be helpful for the BTs especially. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So this might be helpful if you want to make sure you know all of those requirements have been met. If you need to see times and things like that, you can use yeah. this. Okay, in addition, if you want to make sure that, you know, we're trying hard here to make sure that we have everything locked, we have everything completed. So there are some reports that you can run. Um, so you can go to reporting quick reports and there is a report that's called the activity lock report. And so when you run that, you can, you know, see what's locked and what's not. You can see those activities. Remember, we're looking for green checks and locks to be locked. So I think I showed you a few minutes ago, remember um, not everyone has access to the reporting tab that is based on your rights in NASIS. However, even if you don't have access to the reportings tab, you do have access to the um, reporting menu on the staff evaluations page. So from the staff evaluations page, if you click the reporting menu, which looks like a little line graph, and then the evaluation completion report, you can choose the plan type choose what you would like to see. Um, these are some suggestions. Every time you check a box, it is going to make a column in the spreadsheet. So if you just wanted to look at all lock activities, you can do that. If you wanted to narrow down where things were missing, you can do that as well. So if you've never looked from the staff evaluations page at the reporting menu, at that evaluation completion report, once again, if you, um, it's a very good report, even if you have access to quick reports, but if you don't, this is an option for you to do that. Remember, it's evaluation completion, and you would do this for all plan types. Um, then you'll see it's color coded and you can click this little icon in the corner and you can download that as a CSV. When you download, it does not come in color coded, but if you are good with formatting, you know, in Excel or Google Sheets, you can format it to have the colors. But you choose what you would like to see in the plan. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the teacher support and the professional development plans themselves, because now we've gotten all of our ratings and we're going to be talking about what kind of plans teachers need to be placed on for the following year and start to develop goals. So there are three different types of plans for the PDP. There's an individual, a monitor, and a directed. The individual PDP is targeted for new teachers and teachers who are rated at least proficient on all the standards for the teacher rating form. If they are on a individual PDP, they develop their own goals and you meet with the administrator at each um, observation time or at least three times per year to discuss progress. If you have a teacher who is rated developing on one or more standard, then they will be placed on monitored. And in this plan, teachers and administrators would meet together and develop goals together as a team. This would need to be checked on a little more closely than the individual plan. Now, if you have a teacher who is rated not demonstrated on any standard or developing on one or more standard for more than two sequential years, they, they will need to be placed on that directed plan. And in this plan, the administrator develops goals for the teacher based on their observations and any documentation that they have collected. These plans need to be checked on quite often. It's recommended monthly um, just to make sure that teachers are have the resources that they need and the coaching that they need, they need to improve. Um, keep in mind, these are not recommendations for dismissal, demotion, or non-renewal. When a teacher is placed on a professional development plan type, that is their goal for growth through the year, and that's how it is intended, and that's how it was developed. So as you can see to the right, we have a completed summary rating sheet for a teacher up on the screen. We as the principal must now determine which of the PD plan types that teacher should be placed on for the next school year. So just take a look at that. And we have the um, plan types over on the left. So 
since this teacher does have a rating of developing on standard four, they would need to be placed on a monitored growth plan. The administrator would work with the teacher to develop the goals to strengthen and improve their practice in standard four. And they would plan to meet with that teacher during the following year to check progress progress towards that goal. Now I'm going to turn it back over to Donna to show you what this would look like in NISAS itself. So when you're in NISIS, as you're looking at this, when you know you have these steps that have to be done. So you have the principal um, assistant, excuse me, step one, the teacher support is going to go in first and complete their details. And we'll go look at that in one second. And then the um, evaluator is going to sign after the teacher has updated. And then step three, if you have a mentor. So once again, this is where your BTs come in. You'll notice that this is required for beginning teachers, but it does not have an asterisk. Um, in the site because it is not required for all. So you're going to notice that does not have is not required for all, but you're just you might want to run that mentor report first to make sure that if anyone has a mentor that that is completed. You would not want this locked until the mentor had signed off. Then you're going to get the teacher to sign off on this and then you do have that locking activity. So let's when we go to this container, we're going to go to the um, the PDP end of your container. Once again, if you click here, you're going to see that this is where you find your PDP type. We do have PDP types that change throughout the year and people will go back and look at maybe it was changed after the mid year was locked. If you change the PDP type after it was locked, it's not going to change it what it was at that point in time. The historical data is going to be correct. So if you want this to reflect a different type of plan, it would need to be um, changed before you lock it, before you start in this container. Because remember, once you lock it, that historical data stays correct. Because you ha could have a person at the beginning of the year that they were on an individual plan, they were on a visual individual plan at the mid-year, and now at the end of the year, you realize they need some additional support and you change it. It's not going to change what it was at the beginning. It does change it at this point in time. Um, Remember, the um, evaluator is going to have to sign. You can skip this step if you don't need a mentor. And then remember, that will have to be locked. Remember, anything with an asterisk is required, and you do need to lock those locks. So let's go to the live site. Sorry. So if I can, let me find um, a teacher to impersonate or look at someone who is on a PDP plan. OK, so I'm going to click on the person's name. I'm going to come down here to the end of year review. Then you can see you have these PDP details and then you have these evaluator signatures. You do have these locking activities. Then you also have these PDP record of activities as well. And so from here, the PDP record of activities, whereas when you were not in the PDP and you were in the teacher plan, there was only one thing here. But now you can look at what it was, remember, at the beginning of the year, middle of the year, end of the year, or you can see all of those record of activities. Okay, I went ahead and showed you that on the live site. Um, so just to make sure that, you know, we have all of these lock activities, remember there are some um, ways you can do that. You know, you can search for active plan. You can search for PDP from the staff evaluations page. Um, you can also remember run that same report that I showed you. So any rights, whether you have access to a quick report or not, you can come in once again to the staff evaluations page and click on the reporting menu. Go to your evaluation completion, choose PDP. What would you like to appear below? If you just want to look at, you know, the sign off at each part, you can, or the locking activity, or you can see as many as few columns as you would like. Um, and then you do have those quick reports. So if you just want to look specifically, remember in that reporting tab, you do have your mentor signatures, your completion status, um, you have record of PDP activity. So you have all of these different reports that you can run in the quick reports if you have access to the reporting tab to make sure all of those activities are complete. Okay, we're going to just share with you a few additional resources to help you out. This is these are the CEUs that are required for um, administrator renewal. Um, this is the newest. So the administrators would have to have four executive role credits and four general ed credits. 
um, there are some links over here for you to help you with your information on updating your license and the licensure and student services licensure itself. So you can explore those on your own if you if you have questions about those. Also, this is um, the helping to determine those plan types for next year's school resources. Just like I was telling you before, this is the specific guidelines for what type of plan should be um, given and assigned to your teacher based on the things that I have here. This is based with on the general statute information itself. So this is just more resource information for you if you have more questions. So we're going to wrap it up. Don, do you want to talk about this? Or do you yeah, want to I sure can. I didn't know if we'd still be in here. So <laughs> just a reminder um, that please make sure that all of your plans are complete prior to 2020, uh, prior to the 27th of June. Um, the 30th does fall on a Sunday and we do have to have all of those reports run ahead of time. So we're asking that you make sure that everything is completed, all signatures are done, any reports that you need to run at your school, we're asking that you do those on that Thursday, June 27th. So DPI, we can run our reports on the 28th and then we can make sure that um, we report to um, Power School that it's okay to close out the school year so we'll be ready to open back up um, the next week. So please make sure that everything is completed prior to. Once this system is closed and power school is closed out for the next year, we cannot open plans to edit. Um, so if there's any concerns with teachers ahead of time, please make sure that that is covered prior to um, June 27th, because once those um, are closed for the state, they cannot be reopened. Every year, Jennifer and I get messages, yes. I forgot to do something, I need to add, and once it's closed, they are closed, they are not reopened. So just make sure you have that. And these are some reports that might need to be run by your NISA's district administrators. And just a reminder as your end of year checklist, just make sure your staff lists are correct. You know, make sure everybody who's supposed to be observed has been observed. If you have anybody who has plans that need to be deleted or archived, those unnecessary plans, please make sure that you have, um, you know, removed any unnecessary plans. Confirm that everything is complete. Remember to run those reports, looking for those lock reports. And remember, please make sure you run any of your reports prior to June 27th. Have everything finished before then, because all your staff's going to be gone then, before then anyway. If you have never accessed the NISIS Admin Hub, we recommend um, you do that. That is for administrators in NISIS. So you do have the link here. It's in the blue canvas that is found um, in NC Ed Cloud. So there are directions here with how to get to that. And there is a module in there that is for end of year. So you're welcome to use that if you would like. A lot of the things we discussed today will be in that section. There's also this resource site that Jennifer mentioned a minute ago. So you're going to find information about, um, that there's some fillable forms up here. There's people who might not be evaluated in NISIS in here, but all of the policy information that we share is in here as well. I uh, clicked on the site. So this is the site if you would like to see it, that means you click on the site. Um, all of our webinars are also linked here. And then there's a whole tab for um, principal pages for you about your plans. Um, we, in just a few minutes, like nine minutes, we do have another webinar that we're going to be doing. It's going to be focusing on the teacher and staff evaluation process from their end. So if you would like to see what we're sharing with them, you're welcome to join us. You just click right here on this link and you can be there with us in just a few minutes. Um, every time we do a webinar, we do upload it to our NISIS um, playlist. So if you want to go back and watch any previous um webinars that we've done, and this webinar will be uploaded um, within the next couple days, it will be here as well. These are your NISA's contacts, so if you need to know who to contact, I'm Matthew Mayer, it's Director of Digital Teaching and Learning, Jennifer Bass you know, and I are in this webinar with you, and um, Tom Tomberlin is our business owner. If anybody needs to open a service now ticket, the information is here, and this is the link that we have for your NISA's contacts in your school. Please check that out. If that is not correct, please email home underscore base to make sure we can get updated information. Um, I was going to say, I think we've been answering the chat as we go. If you have any more questions, please feel free to add those questions. We'll hang around for just a few minutes, but I did want to go ahead and show this um, feedback page. So if you would like to um, give us feedback or if you need um, a certificate for today's attendance, oh, excuse me.
um, you are welcome to fill that out. The last two questions will ask for your name and email if you would like a certificate and you'll get point one certificate here as well. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll hang around for just a couple minutes. If you have questions, please put those in the chat, but thank you. And um, if you have any questions, you have our contact information, please reach out. Thank you.